Milo, hello. Hello. <laughs> He's been crouched over there for like 45 <laughs> seconds while I was setting up the shot and just waiting to pop in <laughs> like the diva that you are. Am I? So you may be wondering why there is an American flag behind us and we are not in the US. We are in France. We're only about 20 minutes from Laurent's apartment. <laughs> um, but we are on our way to Saint-Germain-en-Laye, which is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite little towns in France. I absolutely love it. And uh, we just happened to be passing the uh, memorial to General Patton. General Patton. I know it's General Patton. Apparently, I just can't talk. And the, the third U.S. Army who passed on what's called Le Voie de la Liberté, the, the route of uh, liberty, yeah. to liberate Paris right along this road. And so we stopped off here because we thought it'd be cool to, to see. Um, but our plan is that we are going away for our anniversary trip. When was our anniversary? We, 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 we don't we have disagree. an answer to that, yeah. I say May. I'm, I said June. And it's currently October, so it could be any time. Basically, <laughs> we just haven't had any any time that was a couple of days together because my parents wanted to pay for us to go and stay somewhere nice for one or two nights to celebrate our anniversary. And since May slash June, we haven't had time to do it. So we finally have two days. One, one day <laughs> and then tomorrow we're staying as well, but Laurent has to run into Paris to do a show. So we've got one and a half days. Um, we're going to go stay at somewhere really, really, really nice in Saint-Germain-en-Laye. Um, Laurent hasn't really been no, to Saint-Germain-en-Laye. So I'm going to show him around. I've been quite a few times. And uh, we're going to take you guys with us. But before we do that, we're going to look at this, uh, this memorial to World War II and uh, a very appropriately American tie to France. <laughs> This monument to General George Patton and the 3rd American Army is in the town of Bleury saint symphorien in the center of France, about halfway along their march from Normandy to near the border with Luxembourg. After the war, General Patton's French liaison officer, Guy de la Vasselet, became the mayor of this village and suggested putting the memorial here near Paris and roughly halfway along the 1147 kilometer long route. The entire path that the army took is now called the Voie de la Liberté in honor of their mission bringing liberty to France. I definitely didn't film you kneeling down like a, someone who's about to fall over. You're yeah. coordinated and graceful. <laughs> <laughs> what are you kneeling down to be next to? <laughs> so, um, on, the, um, on all this road, like you, you already saw the map probably in the video, uh, but on all this road from Normandy to 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 the border of Germany, uh, it's like more than 1,000 kilometers, and every kilometer there's this kind of uh, markers, side side. Uh, how do you call that? Uh, markers, yeah. Yeah, markers with the symbol of the the flame, uh, the flame getting out of the water because it's what was the overlord operation, like the freedom coming from the sea. Um, oh, there's a spider here. Ah! Another one here. Why are there always spiders? <laughs> uh, so yeah, it was the symbol of the the freedom coming out of the water, with the symbol of the of the of the flame uh, as a reference to the Statue of Liberty. Oh, yeah. that's quite cool. Yeah, it's interesting. And there are all the 48 stars because at the time there were only 48 states, I think. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's. It's interesting. It's like a, a, a part of history in the in the oh. in the the countryside. That's very nice. Yeah. It's time to hop back in the car and continue on to Saint Germain en Laye. <laughs> Thank you. 
Was that as satisfying as it looked? Yeah. <laughs> well, we've just checked into our room. We're staying at the Pavilion Henri IV. Ah! <laughs> Again! <laughs> I wasn't ready. <laughs> Um, we're staying at the Hotel Pavillon Henri IV that is right in the center of Saint-Germain-en-Laye. We're literally next door to the chateau and the beautiful, beautiful park, which I'm going to show you guys tomorrow morning, uh, with one of the best views of Paris that I have ever seen. It is such a nice park. So we're going to have a nice walk yeah. around I the park. I don't know yet. Um, but I've seen this, this hotel many times from the outside because obviously when I've been here before, I've been to the chateau. Uh, and always thought that it looked like a really great place to stay. And we saw that they were having, because it's the off season, uh, quite a good deal for two nights. So, um, yeah, we hopped on it. I was like, I have to, I have to do it. I have to do it. So it's, yeah. it's very exciting. So let me show you our room. It's really, really beautiful. <laughs> it's um, very high, though. <laughs> There's there's a problem with with the uh, pest living under the bed, <laughs> um, but it's really a beautiful room, and uh, you can really feel like the age of the building. Um, you know how when you walk into an old room in an old building, it just feels historic, and you really feel that here. And I'll just take you guys in the bathroom as well because the bathroom is lovely, and I'm paying special attention to bathrooms at the moment because. We need to make some design choices for the bathrooms at Everdeen. So this one's really nice. I mean, I, I do like the black and white. I love how the shower is laid out. So uh, you might be seeing some inspiration from this bathroom at Everdeen sometime in the future. But for the moment, we're just going to chill because we have a dinner reservation in about an hour and a half at the beautiful restaurant that is part of this hotel. And they've told us there's vegetarian options, which is also exciting because sometimes they're not. But <laughs> yeah, vegetarian food, <laughs> yay. <laughs> Fancy vegetarian food, but um, that's gonna be our, our six months late anniversary yeah. dinner. <laughs> Our dinner reservation is in five minutes. Would you like to put on pants? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you look very nice. I have pants? You have pants. Good job. You look very nice too. <laughs> Yay! We both managed to wear some form of pants. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> That's very nice. This is what I love about um, Saint-Germain-en-Laye in general, is the view out over the rooftops of Paris is impeccable. It's so gorgeous. And we didn't even have to go outside. This is just the hotel restaurant, it's lovely. He's found unlimited coffee. He's very happy. <laughs> I have to admit, I am not normally a breakfast person. Usually my breakfast is a Diet Coke and a bite of Nutella, but I have to make an exception for this gorgeous breakfast buffet. Come on. You found a fellow citizen of Po. Yeah. He's smiling, it's him. He's got a beard and smiling. It's Henry the Fourth. It's Henry the Fourth, and why why are you linked to, to Henry the Fourth? Because uh, he was born in Po, in the south of France, in the same city as I did. Mm. And you're both very fancy. Yeah, I don't have a fancy beard. Yet. But I can try it. The Pavillon Henri IV, or Henry IV Pavilion Hotel, where we're staying, is part of the new chateau, Chateau Neuf, constructed by King Henry II, but became a royal residence under Henry IV, hence the name Henri IV. However, its real claim to fame came on the 5th of September 1638, when the future King Louis XIV, known as the Sun King in France, was born right here in this hotel 
although of course at the time it was just one wing of the Chateau Neuf. Today the hotel does a beautiful job of mixing the history of its past with all the luxury of a modern hotel. And did I mention the absolutely stunning views? I think this is probably my favorite view of Paris. There are a few different uh, small towns that have beautiful overlooks of Paris from different directions. There's one that's a little bit more southwest over there, and then there's a couple over from the east, but this is, I think, my favorite here at saint germain en -Laye. Um, It's really, really open because the hotel here where we are, and then the entire park and gardens of the chateau, which is about five kilometers long, um, there's a hill that just drops down and there's really just flat land in front of the hill So you just have this gorgeous gorgeous clear overlook um, And one of my favorite things is that in the park of the chateau There are a couple of restaurants where I was thinking that we could probably have lunch I, I'm holding the camera and I agree <laughs> Um, Back to you. <laughs> maybe, maybe since it's so nice outside right now, what we should do is have a little walk down the terrace of the Chateau Gardens and see the park around there. Let's do that. Ah, I have the sun in my <laughs> eyes. I, yeah, like that's better. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a shade on my eyes. So what's really nice about this hotel, and one of the reasons I was so excited to stay here, is that you literally walk out of the hotel's little garden courtyard <laughs> and you're in the Chateau Park with the gorgeous overlook and the gardens. <laughs> There's a wild alpaca. Dangerous. <laughs> Are you okay? I'm not sure. <laughs> Look at this extremely fluffy sheep. Oh my goodness. They're so round. They're so cute. Hello, little sheep. You're very cute. Maybe if you f I drop your phone, we can get into to get yeah. it back. And then we just happen to take some sheep with us. Yeah. And then they live with us forever. Sorry? They're very small little sheep. And they must be like um, a miniature sheep species. Mm. Are you a miniature sheep? There's a fat pig! Hmm? There's a fat pig! Oink, oink, oink! He's a fat pig, look at him! That's a very impressive pig. Hmm, that's a bad framing. Oh, that's better. So happy. Oh, there's another pig there. Oh, yeah. Oh, 
You're gonna get stuck. You're too fluffy for this space. <laughs> All right, turn it around, my friend. <laughs> oh. That's a talented sheep. Not you. No. <laughs> well, we had a nice lunch and a nice beer and a nice walk, but now we're off to get historical because we are going to the Chateau de Monte Cristo, otherwise known as the home of Alexandre Dumas. We're getting very fancy for a five minutes drive putting yeah. the top down. I'm not complaining, I'm happy. <laughs> Go in the cave. Oh, the this isn't ex what you expected when I said we were going to a chateau, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Which way? Yeah, I don't know. You choose. <laughs> I think the castle is up. I don't know. Okay, so let's continue. It's a nice house. Yeah. You found it. Yeah. That's it's not the chateau. Good. No. <laughs> but it's the um it's what he called it's what Alexandre Dumas called the Chateau d'If. Mm -hmm. That's named after the prison in the Count of Monte Cristo, and it's where he did all his writing. Should oh, we go look? Yes, let's go. Right across from Alexandre Dumas' writing hideaway at the Chateau d'If is the main house in a Renaissance style. It's a beautiful building and was described by Balzac as a jewel box after he visited. Today the inside is filled with a large number of beautiful displays and as you walk through the house you learn all about the Dumas family for three generations starting with Thomas Alexandre Dumas who came to France from Haiti at the age of 14 and went on to become a general with an illustrious military career. Of course, his very famous author son, Alexandre Dumas, père or senior, who was one of the most well-read writers in French history and wrote such classics as The Three Musketeers, La Reine Margot, and The Count of Monte Cristo. Finally, you can learn about his son, Alexandre Dumas, fils or junior, 
who is best known for writing Le Dame au Comédia, which is a story loosely based on his own life and went on to be adapted into the opera La Traviata and the film Moulin Rouge. You can also see costumes and maquettes, or examples of the stage scenery, from many different works of theater that Alexandre Dumas Père wrote. During his lifetime, theater and plays were probably his most prolific works. You can also see the beautiful Moorish Salon, which Alexandre Dumas commissioned two Tunisian artists to build for him after he returned from a trip to Tunisia in 1846. The tile work in here is absolutely incredible. And in 1847, work was completed on the Chateau de Monte Cristo, although it wasn't called that yet. It was only called the Chateau de Monte Cristo later when Alexandre Dumas heard that a coachman had thought it was called Chateau de Monte Cristo, decided it was a great name and kept it. He and his family only lived here about a year though because in 1848 he was forced to sell off the furniture to pay some of his debts and in 1849 he had to sell the house itself. Well, we've made it back to the hotel. Or I should say I've made it back to the hotel because Laurent, bless him, has to go to work tonight. They have a show at the opera tonight and he has run into Paris just long enough to do the show and he's coming back this evening. Fortunately, Saint-Germain-en-Laye is only about 40 minutes with a direct train into Paris with the RERA. So it's not a terrible journey, but uh, he's off to work and I am gonna enjoy a lovely little dinner for one in our beautiful room. Uh, I, To be honest, we have been so busy lately that just sitting here and relaxing in the room by myself sounds like a giant luxury. So yeah, I'm gonna do that for the rest of the evening. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> uh, well, it's our last morning, sadly, and we've checked out of the hotel. But we are going to do one more fun saint germain en -Laye activity before we go. Um, we're going to go to the chateau. And, that they didn't know. Yeah. And this chateau is really interesting because it was one of the main like seats of the royal family during the early modern and renaissance period in France. And someone very, very famous in history grew up part of the time here, Who? spent a large amount of her childhood here. A, a queen of part of what is now the UK who was eventually decapitated. Any guess? Mary? Queen of Scots? There you go. Oh! The chateau at Saint-Germain-en-Laye was originally built by Louis VI in 1124, but then largely expanded by King Louis IX, or Saint-Louis, in the 1230s. However, all that remains of this original chateau is the Gothic chapel because it was burned by Edward the Black Prince of England in 1346. The new chateau was brought up around the Gothic chapel by Charles V in 1360 and reconstructed by Francis I in 1539. In 1548, the rooms above the royal suite were refurbished for Mary Queen of Scots, who grew up in France as ward of the king and later married Francis the Dauphin, or Crown Prince of France, who later became Francis II. Today you can still see many elements of the Renaissance era building, like these windows, but the building inside is mainly used to house the National Archaeology Museum. We visited on the first Sunday of the month, and so visiting was absolutely free. You just walk in and start enjoying all of the amazing pieces they have in here. To be honest, I'm much more of an art and uh, Renaissance medieval history type person, but it was absolutely fascinating to see all the archaeological displays, most of them dating from more than 2,000 years ago. Nailed it. They've got a great model of how the chateau was in the Renaissance period. And over here, you can see 
near the chateau, there used to be this massive garden and this complex of buildings. It was called the pavillon, the pavilion. And right there is a big finger. There's a big finger pointing to what is now the hotel we were staying at. That's pretty cool. We've saved the best for last because this is my favorite, favorite part of visiting the chateau. It's the gorgeous interior courtyard. I love the architecture of the brickwork and the galleries and the windows in this courtyard. And then on the opposite end here, we have the original Gothic chapel that we're going to go and visit right now. first visit to Saint-Germain-en-Laye. It was great. It's a very interesting museum. Yeah. It was very nice. And overall, with our overall weekend. Yeah. Yeah. I think we, I think we did a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. I liked it. We had a very nice time. And it's only half an hour from Paris. Yeah, it's the, really amazing train. how fast you it's can really, get out here. It's really great. And the hotel was gorgeous. Yeah. But uh, thank you helpers for treating us to a very nice weekend and a very nice hotel. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's about it. We're about to hop in the car and head back to Chartres uh, to uh, meet up with the helpers who are there. Yeah. And uh, I think that's about it, except to say uh, a big thank you to the patrons. Um, you guys are very much appreciated. Thank you for your support of this channel and of Aberdeen. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please, please do subscribe. Or, or if you are check. subscribed, check yeah. that you are still subscribed because YouTube loves to mess around with that. And uh, I think that's about it. So we yeah. will see you guys next time. <laughs>